this is Ford from Y3K Games, and welcome to the very last episode of The Walking Dead. Man, oh man, oh man, this has been quite the journey. No Time Left certainly lives up to its name in this last episode. Uh, for all his plans and relationships, past and future, everything that Lee has been involved in up to this point, it all kind of boils away. I got you. You can lean on me if you have to. I'm okay. Let me get this straight. The Walking Dead is not a zombie survival or zombie apocalypse game. The game unfeelingly shrugs off your curiosity as to the source of the plague, coldly turns its shoulder at the mention of a cure, and don't even think about the world outside of Georgia, USA. Saying that this was a zombie game would be like calling Mass Effect a third-person squad-based shooter. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of it in there, but that's not why we're here. See, the walkers are just a context. A familiar backdrop for a familiar struggle, that of survival when all the rules are stripped away. You aren't in it alone, thankfully, and your friends will save your life more than once. So then, what becomes important to you when you're freed of your tortured past and dumped unceremoniously into an equally tortured present? It's all water under the bridge. All we can do is move forward. Well, cheers. Unlike Mass Effect, this isn't really a decision tree game, with various endings and pathways to explore. Lee is not a blank slate onto which you project your sentiment. No, actually, he's a guy with his own opinions and desires, and you're more like his guardian angel, gently nudging him into what you think is the right direction. So rather than start with one trunk and branch out into a sea of possibilities, The Walking Dead narrows as it nears completion, drawing you closer to an inevitability and solidarity of Lee's purpose. And when he comes up against his final obstacle, the game will go a little hard of darkness on you, not all the way like Spec Ops the line, but enough to force you to stand up for the decisions you've made along the way. Hello. Okay. This is civil. The subject of death is a sticky one. You can approach it from all sorts of angles, but no matter what, your audience is going to have their own ideas and fears concerning death that are completely out of your control. However, in no time left, subtle use of game mechanics pushed me towards the idea of death in a peculiar way. I've been playing the game for the story first and foremost, you know, the drive to find out what comes next. And that was my greatest fear. The scariest thing about death, to me, was not being able to see the rest of the story. No Time Left was short but very sweet, delivering the capstone of the series without any filler junk to get in the way. I'll give the episode an 8 out of 10, and the series as a whole a 9 out of 10 for, among many other things, an experience that I will not soon forget. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support and your support for Y3K Games. Uh, but now it's time for me to gush, so please stop watching if you're planning on playing these games, because I'm going to go over all my choices and totally spoil it. So leave now if you haven't played it yet. <laughs> Alright, okay, cool. Um, episode 1 was a while ago, so this is... It's hard to remember some of this stuff. Um, honesty, did I lie to Herschel? No, I was actually honest. Looks like most of the players went with that. Uh, Duck or Sean saving, I remember that one very distinctly. This was like the first hard decision. Uh, but I didn't think about this one too much. I just kind of like, just immediately jumped to Duck. I don't know, I wanted to save the kid. It was maybe like a paternal instinct or something. Uh, I, and looking back, I think I could have gone either way. And it looks like the players are pretty much split down the middle. Uh, loyalty, did I side with Kenny? Uh, yeah, I did, and I actually sided with Kenny pretty much throughout the entire game. I don't know why, I was always kind of like on his side. Um, it'd be interesting to play through and, and not, but that was also pretty much split down the middle for the players. Uh, Mercy, no, I refused the gun for Irene. Uh, that was, that was tough, but I, um, I, I stand by that, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, the real hard decision, of course, Doug or Carly, end of the first episode. Um, man, I used all the time. I literally waited until the very last second to choose. Uh, I liked Doug. I liked Carly a little bit more. It looks like uh, most of the players went with that. I'm not sure if there was like a, a guys wanting to save girl mentality about that, because I'm sure that statistically, I'm sure more guys played the game than girls did. Um, I don't know. I, I was happy with Carly. I think that she was a little bit more personable. All right, episode two. I really went with the majorities on this one. Of course, I didn't know at the time. Uh, chopping David's leg off to save him? Yeah, totally. And it looks like pretty much everyone did that. Uh, interrogation, the crazy woman in the forest. Oh, man. Uh, Jolene, she freaked me the hell out. No, I had Dan Danny shoot her. I didn't shoot her. 
Um, helped kill Larry? No, I actually, I really thought we could save him. Um, let Kenny take care of that one. Uh, and again, everyone did that, or most of the people did that. Uh, revenge, killing both of the brothers? No, I didn't. I, that was one of the things where I was like, look, the walkers are everywhere, the fence got run over. I don't, they're probably going to die anyway. So it looks like me and most of the people, most of the players didn't kill them. Uh, stole food from the car? Yeah, I did. Now it was actually kind of split down the middle. I mean, yeah, I know it made Clementine angry, but my feeling was, um, in the one circle, there's, there's kind of like four ways to go it. Uh, we take the food and there are people. Um, okay, that sucks. We take the food and there aren't people. There's no consequence. We don't take the food and there are people. Uh, okay, well then they get to keep their food and that's good. We don't take the food and there aren't people and it's just wasted food. And there was that, it was that, um, possibility that really got to me. I'm like, I'm not going to leave food for nobody. What if there isn't anybody? So I'm going to take it. Eh, it was kind of, it was kind of tough. It wasn't as tough as Doug or Carly though. Oh man, episode three. Oh, if you watched the videos, this is my favorite one so far, or favorite one by far. And these decisions were really tough. I actually went with the minority on a couple of these. Um, did you shoot the girl in the street? Actually, I went with the majority and I was mean to that poor girl. I didn't shoot her because I didn't want to get in trouble. I wanted to get my stuff and get out. And I figured she was kind of dead anyway. Um, abandoning Lily. All right, man, I was definitely on Kenny's side for like most of the conflict between him and, uh, him and Lily throughout it. So when Lily shot Carly for me, I was like, no, I didn't, I didn't even pause. I just said, leaving you behind. You're, you're done. I'm not dealing with your shit anymore, Lily. You're gone. Um, stand off with Kenny. I talked him down. I, 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 again, I was his friend like the whole time. I didn't want to fight him or anything like that. Um, heavy burden. Oh God. Shooting duck was so freaking tough. I actually, the thing I was hung up on was not me. Like I can shoot him. I can not shoot him. That's fine. I was like, what is better for the father? I, that was really tough. I actually didn't have an answer right away. It didn't occur to me right away that whether or not it would be easier for him to do it. Cause, and then look back and say, okay, well, I, I was the one who had control over that situation. Or um, is it easier for him to look back and say, I didn't have control over it because I didn't actually pull the trigger. Um, and I went with shooting it for him. It seemed like the thing that was easier for Kenny. Because again, I was thinking about him, not me. But man, that one was hard. Um, and a helping hand... Uh, when Omid was running up the train, I totally, I didn't act, I was spam clicking, so I made that mis- I just accidentally didn't help Omid. I helped Krista. Um, I, I felt really bad, but I wasn't going to go back and change it. Um, so whatever. I, I would have actually helped Omid, but I was with the minority that probably accidentally did that by spam clicking. Uh, episode 4. Okay, so this is the one that I thought was a little weaker. But um, I did like the choices in this one. The boy in the attic I didn't think was a big choice. Uh, I, I was just like, you know what, Kenny, I did it last time, I'll do it again. I'll shoot him, no, big, no biggie. Uh, Hippocratic Oath, did I lie to or threaten Vernon? Uh, no, I was honest, I mean, the guy looked just shaken up to hell, so I was just like, I don't need to, I don't need to threaten you. You're gonna fall apart as it is. Um, and I bring Clementine with me to Crawford? Yeah, I brought her, I just, I don't know, I really think that that was kind of a bad decision, but it looks like most of the players did that. Uh, I was with the majority for those, first three and then I was with the minority for the last one I let Ben fall I, I was like okay look I told him to shut up and he decided to spill it to Kenny at the worst time possible I'm like look you can talk to him later just and like Kenny was flipping out and I was like Kenny beat him beat him the hell up later but this is not the time like obviously this is not the time or place to discuss this and then Ben's like when he when he asked me to let him go I'm like well I, come on I don't he was asking me to let him go, so I let him go. Uh, it was tough. I felt pretty bad about that one. Uh, I actually hid the bite, because um, at that point I thought, I don't really know exactly the consequences of being bitten. I mean, it, it, it killed Duck, but will it kill me? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find out, and I certainly don't want them to turn on me and try to kill me right now, like with Larry or something. And episode five. Um, these were not too bad. So, did I remove the arm? No, I actually didn't cut the arm off. I just, at that point, I was like, look, it's in my bloodstream already. I don't think removing the um, the source of the infection would actually make a big difference. I don't know, I was making a medical um, bullshit reasons. <laughs> but it worked for me. Uh, lost my temper with Kenny? Man, apparently, I was one of, of the, the minority that actually kept their cool with Kenny. Yeah, Kenny actually... He acted like a jackass a lot during the game. I'm surprised that I was so cool with him, but ah, uh, whatever. I argued calmly with him. I did not pick up the bust and smack him with it. Um, gave up my weapons. Actually, I kept the cleaver. 
um, at the end. I kept the cleaver. I was like, I want to have something to fight with, and it looks like most player, most players gave up their weapon. Uh, did I kill Clementine's captor? No, and uh, that was pretty much split down the middle. I mean, he, I guess he deserved it or something. Uh, other people were thinking. I just didn't feel like killing him. I was like, we can just leave him for the walkers. Uh, and stop Lee from turning. Yeah, me and the majority of players, I, I had her shoot me. I was That was tough, and I, again, I used the entire time for that decision, but um, that was that was pretty awesome.